Nothing that touched my heart And it began this way Just like the river I've been running ever since He said it's been a long time coming But I know my change is gonna come to you, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Anderson United Methodist Church. Today, we observe the fifth Sunday of the Lenten season. As you engage in worship, remember your covenant with God, that through it, you can renew your commitment to Him, increase your faith in Him, and embrace with unwavering fervor the commandments He has given you to love Him and to serve others. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, my choir in their farewell concert and recording, the Tri City Singers! Put your hands together. Come on, choir. Let's encourage them out there. Let's tell them that the blessing of Abraham is on their life. Oh, my brothers and sisters, because you are in Christ, you are Abraham's heir. You have an inheritance on your life. You're the heir to the promise God made to Abraham. Go get your inheritance. Anybody gonna go get it out there? Ah. Here we go, y'all.
look, score of him. Ah, somebody's gonna walk out of here and go right into their inheritance. Come on, tell them what it is. Say it's him. Today's scripture lesson comes from Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. And it reads, When Abram was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
good morning, Christian friends. I greet you in the matchless name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we come to worship again this day uh, here at the Anderson United Methodist Church online service. I'd like to share two or three announcements with you before we go into the Word this morning. The first announcement is that I want to impress upon you the significance and the importance of having the COVID vaccine. The significance and the importance. You've heard uh, the president say that hopefully by July we will be able to have July picnics and barbecues and all that. That's if we get vaccinated. And that will mean that persons will go and secure vaccination. They are more plentiful now than they've ever been. They've lowered the age now from 65 to 40 ish, I believe. And uh, I hope that you will go and take this opportunity. The more folks we can get vaccinated, the sooner we can get back to some normalcy in our life together as a community of faith, Anderson United Methodist Church. And I hope you will do that. And we will be sending out a survey uh, next week asking you about certain things because we're trying to prepare for the day and opportunity when we may come back gathering as a congregation on limited services under the protocol of the CDC. I'd like to share with you activity for Holy Week. On starting March the 31st at 6 o'clock, we will have our Wednesday night Bible study. On April the 1st, we will have the Stations of the Cross. That will be a video presentation of the last week of the life of Jesus. And then on April the 2nd, we're having the Carrying of the Cross. And that is going to be a unique opportunity for you and your family to participate in your neighborhood. That service will be a virtual type service, and we're going to ask that you walk in your neighborhood following the visual uh, instructions that you will have, and you'll see more about that in the weeks to come. Then also on April the 3rd, which is Saturday, we're going to have uh, our children and kids observance. There will be an opportunity for uh, persons to come and drive through and pick up uh, Easter treats and uh, things of that nature. So we hope you'll participate in that. And then April the 4th, April the 4th, a very high holy day, that is Easter Sunday. And on Easter Sunday, we will have two services. Uh, first service will be held at 8 o'clock out on the parking lot. And then the second service will be held at uh, 10 o'clock on the parking lot. This will be another opportunity for us to come and share in Holy Communion. And we hope that you just load up the cars and that you will come. We can get 400, 500 cars at one time. We hope to have two great, wonderful services on that day and want you to come and be a part of our Holy Week services. And also next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We'll celebrate Palm Sunday. And then on Easter Sunday morning, we'll celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the best way we know how and the best way we can. Again, thank you for tuning in with us this morning and let us pray. Eternal God, so much has transpired this week. So many ups and downs, so many crooked ways, so many level planes. But we know, God, that you're still in control. And we pray now, God, that you will protect those persons who might have been in harm's way because of the, the raging winds and the howling winds that occurred a few days ago. And Father, we still pray for your healing of the nation and of the land. We thank you for the availability now of vaccine that persons may go and and shoot up in order to rid the community and world of this horrible pandemic. So, God, we pray that you will hear, hear our words this morning and that you will bless those who are tuned in for this service this morning, that they may feel a spiritual blessing and feel a, a nourishment of their very souls as we share the word and pray your presence with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our subject this morning is your change is coming. Your change is coming. That is taken from Genesis, the 17th, verses 1 through 7. A change, a change has come over me. Change, change can be tough to face. Change can be difficult to handle. Change can be an awesome thing if you're not prepared sometimes. You see, the world is changing so quickly that we awake with anxieties each and every day. You see, change is something that happens to everyone. Each and every individual that you come into contact with will experience change in their life. We can have things going one way one moment and wondering what on earth happened the next. Some change that come our way, we do not see them coming. We cannot prepare for them. We don't notice they're on the way. 
until they hit us and knock us down. How many boxers have been in the ring who had was sure of mind that they was winning the bout and only, only to miss seeing coming a left hook that knocked them out and they lost the bout? Rick Jonah once said, change is coming on the world so fast that the only thing we can count on is change. The only thing we can count on is change. And some of the churches, are, uh, some of the changes are good and some of them are better and some of them are not so good at all. We've all familiar with the expression, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. You see, if you don't, if you don't wake up every day happy, you need to change something. If you don't wake up every morning happy and excited and thanking God for the blessings of a new day, there's, you should change something about your life about your experience, about the way you perceive things, about the way you approach the gift of life each day. Sometimes that's how we feel in the church, particularly since this pandemic hit, we had to change everything. We had to change the way we worship. We had to change the way music was presented. We had to change the way we had committee meetings. Because of the pandemic, we had to change so many things. We've even said, we, 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 we serve a God of tradition and a God of change. Isn't that amazing? He's a God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, but a God of tradition and a God of change. He, 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 he ever changed his method. He's ever changed his method of reaching out to the lost and the dying. But his message, he might have changed his method of doing it, but his message is always the same. Now, the most dramatic change a person may face in his or her lifetime is a change from a saint to a sinner. <laughs> a change from a saint to a sinner. He changed my life, and now I am free. Washed away my sins and made me whole. Well, you heard the song Amazing Grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. was blind, but now I see. Change had occurred in that person's life. And you know, well, the greatest change we have is when we move from a question mark about Jesus to an exclamation point about him. Yes, I know my Redeemer lives. You see, God desired that mankind would experience this change in your life. God hopes and God expects that we will move from where we might have been to where we are today, and that is being a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ. And God never stopped trying to reach each of us with his special delivery message of love. The trouble is, the trouble is that many people miss the opportunity to experience this transformation, moving from what once was to what is now pleasing and pleasant in the sight of God. So I thought we examined the story of Abram, change to Abraham. The text focused on, on name change given to Abram, a change of name which significantly changed his life. His whole life plan and his purpose was changed because he experienced a change in his life. God made Abraham a promise that his family would multiply and be great. You remember Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how I wonder what you are? Well, God kind of took Abram out one day and said, Hey, Abram, I'm going to make, your, I'm gonna make your, your family as plentiful as the stars in the sky. Gosh, wasn't that something? And Abram found himself falling down before God, receiving this wonderful challenge, receiving this blessing of being changed. He promised him that he would be just as exalted of a family of a small family, but that he would be exalted of a great multitude of peoples. I'm, I'm going to change your status. I'm going to move you from a small responsibility to make you the head man, the head dog. <laughs> I want us to look at three things, a three-step God used to change a person. You see, God did three things with Abram that changed his whole life. Number one, God communicated with Abram. Number two, God converted Abram. And number three, God consecrated Abram. Let's deal with God communicated with Abram. 
You see, God can't do a thing with us until he first established a line of communication with us. There was a man who had two fantastic mules, and he wanted those mules to be trained by the best mule trainer in the community. So he took the mules to the man and said, hey, I want you to train my mules, but I want you to promise me one thing, that you'll not lay hand on my mules. I don't want you to be brutal. I don't want you to be harsh to my mules. I don't want you to, to, to bruise them up at all. And the man reached over. The first thing he did, reached over and got a hammer, a rubber hammer, and he hit both of the mules right between the eyes. And the man said, I thought I asked you and told you not to harm my mules. He said, well, I had to get their attention first. And now that I have their attention, I can train them. Now that I have their attention I can give them commands and instructions now that I have their attention. When God gets our attention, he can provide the instructions. He can provide the grace and the mercy. Well, Abram responded positively to God's conversation. He paid attention and he demonstrated his interest in what God had to say. Jermaine Hawkins Hawke says, <laughs> he changed my life complete. And now I sit at my master's feet to do what must be done. Can't you see Abram sitting at his master's feet, <laughs> taking in the instructions, taking in his life's work set before him? Well, I know, I know what you are thinking. If God speaks to me that way, I'll listen too. <laughs> but God speaks to us every day through his word. And, and, and many Christians pick and choose what they will listen to, I'm afraid. God tells us to honor. God tells teens to honor their fathers and their mothers, but some just decide to ignore God. God tells us to, 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 to <laughs> bridle our tongue and refrain from gossip, but some flap their jaws anyway all the time. God tells us to be faithful to the church and forsake not the symbol of yourself together but we have to do that virtually now. And I hope that you are gathered around the television wherever you are now, or the computer or the desktop or whatever it is, and that you're sharing with your family this opportunity, the corner near, the coming together of the body of Christ. God tells us to forgive our enemies, but we hold grudges for decades. <laughs> Whoa, boy, we can hold some grudges. Well, she did this 20 years ago. He mistreated me 20 years ago. God tells us to be faithful to the tithe, but we leave or we send in the mail sometime a tip. <laughs> ah, God is speaking to us. The problem is that we have trouble listening to him. God spoke to all mankind from Calvary, from Calvary's mountain through the sacrifice of his only begotten son on the cross. If that doesn't get our attention, what will? God said to Abram, walk before me and thou be perfect. And Abram heard God. God may be speaking to you right now in your living room, in your den, on the back porch, in your car. If he is, your change is coming. That's it, Tremaine's testimony. A change, a change has come over me.
very second act God committed with Abraham was that God converted Abram. God converted Abram. You see, God has your attention. Now that once God has your attention, he's not going to leave you in your present state. <laughs> he's going to cause a change in your life. He's going to trans you from someone who had a deaf ear to his word to someone who hears and appreciates and maybe even embrace his word. You see, his words are desired to know more about him. You can be sure that once God convert version process is started, your change is coming. Once God had Abram's attention, he converted Abram from a, a, a separate sinner to a sanctified saint. He took away Abram's old name, which meant father, and changed his name to Abraham, which meant father of many nations, father of many, of a multitude. You see, when God starts to change, he may have to take away some things from us. He may have to take away a lying tongue. He may have to take away a taste for alcohol or a desire for crack cocaine. He may have to take away uh, uh, the fondness of, of gossiping. He may have to take away uh, a hardened heart, but he won't leave you empty. He'll replace the emptiness with love, with joy, with peace, with patience. What about some meekness? Good and more, much and more. God made a covenant with man through Abraham. You see, the purpose of which we do not <laughs> bring contract, but we bring understanding. And it changes everything. You see, we have a new covenant through Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 say, Therefore, if any person be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You see, God wants us to change. He wants us to move our lives forward, away from the pain of the past, away from temptation and sin, away from our past regrets. God wants to transform us into men and women who are wiser who are holy, who, are, who, who speak sweetly, who perform dutifully. He wants, he wants us to achieve the utmost that he wants for us. In other words, if you accept Christ, your change is coming. A change that sets you free from, from addiction and, and sets you free from those things that will hold you down, those things that will entrap you to yesterday. When you accept this chain, you have a freedom from bondage and bitterness and unforgiveness. It gives you power to deal with the crises in your life. And God knows we have those crises. Monkeys on our backs all the time. Unforeseeable things that come and require and demand our time that push us into action, whether we want to go or not. This change put homes and relationships back together again. It heals pride and arrogance. It removes guilt from things you know you should never have done. This change, this change, it offers another chance to those who will admit that they need God in their lives. A change, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful change. Let us hear again our testimony from Tremaine. He changed my life complete, and now I sit, I sit at his feet to do what must be done. I'll work and work until he comes. 
this bring us to the third thing that God did with Abram and Abraham after he changed him from Abram to Abraham. Uh, he consecrated Abraham for service. He consecrated Abraham for service. He didn't give the details of his plan to Abraham in advance. He just said, get up and go. And Abraham went. <laughs> he trusted God. You see, faith is that phase between knowing what God's plan is and seeing it actually take place. So Abraham took his new faith and obeyed God without knowing where it would lead him. He left the familiar city that he had called home, and he travels into a new destination, and yet unrevealed by God, he walks by faith. Because God has, has consecrated him or set him apart for a great work. And a songwriter heard of that act of Abraham and he copied these words. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. God wants each of us to reach the destiny he has chosen for us. But he doesn't convert us and put us on autopilot just because we belong to him. As Christians, we have to cooperate and participate with the plan of God so we can move forward. All that he has for us. Well, that's what Abram, Abraham did. He cooperated with God. He put God first. Following the covenant agreement God laid out for him. And sought to live separately from the world and separate and perfectly. You see, each of us has a God-given destiny for success. It's part of the inheritance we have as God's children under the new covenant. It's a spiritual inheritance that, 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 that showers us with blessings of love, peace, and other fruits of the Spirit. But it is also an inheritance that provides for our material things. God wants to do the same thing for you. And for you. And yeah, for you. He's using the same three steps he used with Abraham. Step one, we have to hear his voice. Step two, we have to be converted through believing in Jesus Christ. And step three, we have to be consecrated and claim our inheritance. Abraham had free will. He could have disobeyed God, but he chose to obey, to trust, and to travel. Maybe it's time for you to put on your traveling shoes, Anderson. And move from what God wants you to do, not just materially, but spiritually. If you heard God's voice, your change is coming. If you trust God's promise, your change is coming. If you submit to God's will, brothers, sisters, your change is coming. If you embrace God's love, you know what? <laughs> your change is coming. If you surrender if you just surrender, and if you've been surrendering these 40 days, if, 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 if you've gone to God in prayer and meditation, and if you've gone deep down in your soul, and you, you've taken those things, and you've laid them on the altar, wherever it may be for you right now. If you embrace God's love, your change is coming. But if you surrender to God's grace, your change, <laughs> your change is coming. Amen. Lord, he changed, changed my life completely. Changed, and now I sing. Changed, I sit at my side, your seat. To do changed, what must be done. Changed, I'm gonna work and work changed, until my.
interchange of hearts and minds and spirits that's available to us. And we pray that as we've journeyed together these awesome days of Lent, that we all have experienced some change. And that we have embraced some newness of our experience in love. And that we claim Jesus Christ in a new way as Lord and Savior. And for those of us, O oh God, who are still sitting at your feet, <laughs> awaiting instructions and directions, we pray for clarity, for mercy, and for grace. So bless us as we continue to journey on from this place, from this station in life, from this circumstance, from this, ah, this episode in our lives, and experience you in new ways. Because our change is coming. Amen. 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 Change me, oh God. Make me more. Wash me through, through, create in me a clean Thank you.